permanent manner. While experimenting with his electrical conductivity assemblies, he found that the blood sample of any patient could be made to exhibit all the electrical readings of the patient themselves when conducted into a neutral subject. These last few discoveries made it possible for Dr. Abrams to demonstrate the elimination of the need for the patient's physical presence, the elimination of the need of percussing the patient's abdomen or observing it in the ancient method, and finally, of having the patient present during the diagnosis. The only time Dr. Abrams would use this latter means of determining health was when the patient was unable to travel the long distance to him, or when the patient was too infirm to travel at all. Remember, in those early days of the century, travel was too expensive and limited in aspect for iatrical visits. The only critical value to which Dr. Abrams insisted for these blood sample diagnoses was that the samples reach his laboratory within a certain critical time period. In these aspects, Dr. Abrams believed that the samples of blood taken were acting as storage condensers, even as his former experiments with organic energy persistence was noted. It was Dr. George Kreil who later advanced such theories, and the late Dr. Ehrenfried Pfeiffer, who actually studied the role of crystallization in blood samples and the preserving of organic energy within blood itself. The final frontier which Dr. Abrams was to develop had an equal footing with Dr. White's original thesis on disease cause and cure. Seeing the electrical aspects of organic disease energy in the laboratory and realizing its true representation as a carrier energy of organic potentials, Dr. Abrams decided to perform experiments with the introduction of electrical sharp pulses into a patient's body. What he had in mind was the eventual design and proliferation of therapy modes which used electrical waves rather than the material crystals administered as pills to be swallowed or as liquids to be injected. To these ends, he began the experiment using spark gap oscillators of the kind then in use for diathermy. These devices, originally designed by Nikola Tesla, were effective in alleviating certain conditions and ailments. Dr. Abrams suddenly knew why. As Dr. White had indicated, the disease state is characterized by potentials and pulsations which are abnormal for the body as compared with the reactions and values obtained from vital subjects. Against these normal lines, one found that the disease states of various illnesses had constantly manifested values, which were the fingerprints, so to speak, of the illness. Though used in diagnosis, Dr. Abrams wished to now extend these understandings. These new devices were now designed to oppose the disease pulsation states in the attempt at neutralizing and reversing the conditions within the unhealthy patient. These oscillators of Abrams came into great vogue for a time and Dr. Abrams was able to bring forth the proofs of their efficacy to the public repeatedly. Numerously prestigious and highly qualified writers, possessed of great integrity, visited his now famous clinic in San Francisco where they saw patients which had been cured of many then incurable ailments. This was so by the application of pulsed electrical energies sent into the affected regions of the body. Thomas Colson was to advance such methods of using chopped pulsations of very energetic electrical waves in order to break disease conditions up within patients. Between 1919 and 1920, at least 50 variations of the Abrams oscilloclast were developed. In America, perhaps, in all this modern world of intrigue, success is a curious thing, having fickle emotions for the discoverer. 
the one thing which Dr. Abrams never conceived was the cumulative effect of jealousy on the part of numerous of his own colleagues and the ever watchful eyes of the dynastic families who can level destructive forces of slander and of maligning epitaphs over the bodies of the innocent whom they step upon in their relentless path of death. The great display of vehemence with which that newly formed association of medical practitioners an inner council of connected individuals with questionable motives. These pursued and destroyed Dr. Albert Abrams. It is the very irrepressible nature of discovery, however, which causes all dynastic rule to secretly tremble in fear. For no one may tell where or when the next such revolution may arise. Who beyond this nation's borders will appear bearing the prize of truth. Through certain means of character assassination, Dr. Abrams is to this day slandered, ridiculed, and portrayed as a cheap trickster and a sinister figure of whom children should beware. And these portraits are to be found in numerous children's books on doctors and medicine. Such an open exhibition of behavior modification shows the shameless and truly unenlightened attitude of a profession which had once demanded absolute devotion and respect. Through such displays and measured against these uncovered materials which we are exposing finally to you, we may determine the true motives of the association and discover the true leadership behind the iron mask. To be sure, such outrage will no longer be tolerated. The dynastic rule of Commodores must be totally judged and destroyed for its crimes against humanity. In our next telecast, we will tell the life and work of Dr. Ruth Drown, a brilliant and revolutionary worker in the field of medical diagnosis and therapy of the kind advanced by Dr. Albert Abrams. Dr. Abrams was censured, libeled, slandered in character assaults, viciously pursued. His practice was taken from him. His licenses were taken from him. But for the present, let us salute Dr. Albert Abrams, discoverer, physician, and medical engineer of the future. astounding discoveries and developments of Dr. George S. White and Dr. Albert Abrams, working independently at the turn of the century and mentioned by us in two previous telecasts, came new discoveries one upon another in the field of radio diagnosis. The cumulative effect of these spectacular findings was to culminate in the life of Dr. Ruth Drown for whom this video essay is dedicated and for whom the title, Gateway into the Future, is most fitting. While the focus of Dr. White was to be the patient and that of Dr. Abrams, the neutral subject used in measurement of disease states, it was Dr. Ruth Drown whose revolutionary leap in the art of radio diagnosis placed physician in focus and responsibility during measurement. Her legacy is remarkable in every aspect. Her designs and research developments are thoroughly spectacular and awe-inspiring. 
and those who are still alive who remember that sense of the future while in her presence will attest to the truths of which